Hello and welcome to Izumi's Cozy Cast, the coziest roleplay podcast on the internet. I am your host, Izumi, and whoa, we have face cam? What even is this? I I just like threw on eyeliner. I wasn't wearing eyeliner earlier. I kind of wish I wouldn't have thrown on eyeliner, to be honest. I kind of liked how I looked before, but it's okay. We still hot. We working on self-confidence as a New Year's resolution. We stunning. Anyways, I hope you all are having an amazing day. And if not, I hope this makes it just a little bit better. Today's episode is brought to you by our wonderful members on the channel, aka... Let me go ahead and pull up the list. We had a massive Christmas, like, uh, it's Glack gifted a bunch of members, so... We have quite a few. And if you would like to get a shout out, I do once a month shout outs for those in the uh, cutesy dumpling rank and higher, which is the second rank and higher. Um, there is Lil Dumpling, Cutesy Dumpling, and Darling Dumpling, I believe is the top rank's name is Darling Dumpling. Um, but shout out to Raven, Luna Rose, The Cyan Alpha Wolf, Like Lore Gaming. Kiara Darot, Kiara Darrow, Kiara Darrow, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, and It's Glack. I'm also going to give a special little shout out to one of the Lil Dumplings this month. This is not going to be a normal thing, but if you did not know, It's Glack was my first ever member. Um, they've basically been my only member for the entire time I've had memberships up on the channel. They're amazing. I love them. Hi, Glack. Love you, girl. Um, but I, um, as a Christmas gift from It's Glack, got gifted a bunch of members, aka, yes, sorry there was a cut just there. I had to answer a question from Gabe. Um, but I'm going to be giving a shout out to one of the little dumplings. This is not a normal thing I will be doing every month, but I will be doing it this month because It's Glack gifted all the lovely <laughs> members I just listed, um, cutesy dumpling this month. Um, and this is the first, th this is the second ever member I have ever had that is independently joined. So I wanted to give them a shout out as well. Shout out to Lydia Trinket. Thank you so much for becoming a member this month. Um, if you guys want to become a member, uh, hit the join button and it'll tell you what you get and what the pricing is. Don't feel at all like you have to join members. It's just for those who can afford it and want to support me making this my full-time job. Specifically like Izumi and Izumi ASMR. I want to make my full-time job. Anyways, today's topic is becoming a YouTuber, or like how to become a YouTuber, like becoming a content creator. And the, my cats are having a wrestling match behind me, don't worry, unless they... <laughs> unless they make noise, they're play fighting. They play fight all the time. They're sisters. It's how they show love. Um, but if they... I'll break them up if it gets serious, don't worry. I can see them behind me in the viewfinder. But today we're answering questions about becoming a YouTuber, how to become one. Because if you do not know, I do this practically full time. So I, I do Izumi and Izumi ASMR. It basically makes enough that I can, you know, I can buy groceries and, you know, like, it, it, it's basically grocery money. <laughs> it's basically grocery money at this point in time. And a little bit of my bills. It's, it's probably gro grocery and bills. Um, not my rent. Does not cover my rent. Um, that's because rent's like super expensive right now so stupid. But anyways, um, it covers like my groceries and like my utility bill. Um, but my rent is covered by, I do a lot of freelance work as like a voice actor. And I do like, I, I write articles and like stuff like that. I, I, I do a bunch of little things. I do graphic art. I do like, like thumbnail work, banner work, um, like advertisement logos, stuff like that. If you need a girl, hit me up. I'll tell you my tell you my pricing. Um, but, <laughs> um, that's how I make my income. I do. I make my income solely offline. Um, but as someone who has been doing YouTube for a long time, I still, I still say I'm a YouTuber because at the end of the day, I don't think you need to be making a ton of money off of YouTube to be a YouTuber. I think as long as you are enjoying it and it is one of your sources of income, or at least you are aspiring that to be your source of income. 
um, or one of them, I think then you are a YouTuber in my eyes, um, like a full-time YouTuber, you know, because I think anyone who just wants to do YouTube and plans on doing YouTube and posts videos is a YouTuber. I don't think there's any like level of YouTube you have to surpass to become a YouTuber, you know? Um, also, before we start answering the questions, let's talk about the main question. Why do I have face cam this episode? A couple of you guys wanted it, and so I'm testing it out this episode to see how it does if you guys like it more, if the interaction's higher, because you guys can kind of like see me, like conversate with me, I don't know. Um, some episodes, I'm gonna be wearing no makeup sweats, you know, like I'm gonna be no, wearing no makeup, messy bun, like I, I, I was wearing that earlier, and I just put on a little bit of makeup. Um, and then other days I'm going to be dressed up to the nines, you know, I'm going to be like stunning. I'm going to be like wearing like a fucking ball gown and like full cosplay. I don't know. It really depends on my mood, what I wear. I'm a mood dresser. What can I say? It's like dressing an avatar in a video game, you know, it really depends on my mood. Sometimes I'm like a fairy tale princess. Other days I'm a little servant girl. It really depends. Today I'm servant girl snuck into a princess's vanity and did a little makeup. It's not a lot, but, like, it's like at the end of the day, I only put on, like, concealer, blush, which doesn't even show up on camera, and a little bit of eyeliner. But it made me feel pretty, so I put it on, you know? You should always feel pretty, though, without makeup and with makeup. Pretty both. Pretty both. Makeup should be fun, not necessity. And that's just facts. Anyways, let's get into these questions. So I asked questions on my community page. Um, I want to start making this a thing, even on like topics that don't necessarily have like a questionnaire type of topic. I would like to answer questions, like general questions, maybe at like the end of certain podcasts. Um, kind of like uh, Anything Goes, the podcast by Emma Chamberlain. She does a Q&A section at the end of her stuff. And I think that it's it's very good for like interaction and feeling like you're talking to someone like talking to a friend you know um i answer i asked these i i i posted on izumi and izumi asmr so my main channel my asmr channel um on my community page i posted give me questions for an upcoming podcast episode the topic how to become a content creator slash youtuber uh, comment below some questions you have about content creation or YouTube in general, and you may be featured in a in the next Izumi's Cozy Cast episode. Um, and you guys delivered. I I got a good bit of of questions. Like I think this is some of the I think this is kind of the most questions I've ever gotten. Like when asking for Q and A questions because Izumi ASMR has been thriving. So like good interaction, good interaction. Anyways. Izumi's been thriving, thriving too, by the way. Like, Izumi's actually doing really well. Like, all, all, all in the green. All in the green, baby. Because for a while, wasn't as much. But that's not what matters. What matters is I have fun with it. That's what matters. Anyways. They're still fighting. It's okay. Uh, for those who are only listening, I keep referring to my, my kittens behind me on the bed. Um... Let me know if you like face cam, though, by the way, in the comments. Um, this may not be for every episode. It might only be for certain episodes. I think when I do interviews, it'll probably just be audio, unless the other person's comfortable with doing face cam. Anyways. Um, first question. We're starting off with Izumi. So this channel we are on, my main channel. First question comes from Ketella. And it is, how do you make content slash role plays when you are a beginner with little to no help? So I'm assuming the role play they're talking about is Minecraft role plays, since this is typically, I, I do Minecraft role plays on this channel where on Izumi ASMR, I do ASMR role plays. Um, so for these questions, anytime they reference like role play, um, that's probably what they're doing. And then once we go over to Izumi ASMR, they're probably referencing ASMR. Um, also, not going to be able to answer every single question because I don't think I will have time because I am talkative. Hello, kitten. There's a kitten on my desk. Um, but I will answer as many as I can. I'm starting with the ones that I think I have really good answers to. <laughs> and then if we still have time, I'll answer even more. Um, so even if I, if I stop with answering Izumi 
questions and I move on to Izumi ASMR, I might come back to Izumi if we have time. Um, anyways, how to make content slash role plays when you're a beginner with little to no help. So I was once there. I had no friends who did it um, until I started doing it. I had no experience. I barely knew how to install mods. Um, and I did it. You know, I the first ever roleplay I did, I was 11 years old. It was The Legend of Trinity. It was a lot of fun. And um, I think the biggest tip I have for this is um, while you're in this beginning stage, don't stunt your creativity by what others think you have to do, if that makes sense. Do what comes naturally to, do, to you. What she said. <laughs> Uh, if you hear meows throughout the, the episode, I do apologize. Are you okay, baby? Oh, baby. Oh. Okay. I think her ego's bruised, guys. Oh, poor baby. She was trying to get the string. I'm actually going to fix that real quick. She was trying to get the string for the curtain, and she fell off the windowsill. She's okay. She's running about. You okay? I'm wearing shorts, guys. I promise. You okay? You feel like you guys understand me having to check on my baby. Up on my back. I know you love it. She she really does fit her name. She's like a bird. She likes perching on backs occasionally. Now she's fighting her sister again. She's just out for blood. Anyways, sorry for that. Um, this is this is what you get when you get face cam. You just I get to walk around my room and do random things while I do this. Um, I had little no, no help in the beginning. I I had I had no help in the beginning. Um, I had to look up everything. So I recommend researching a lot. And as I said, my first point um, that I don't think I fully finished because um, I got distracted by my cat. Um, <laughs> you guys okay? Yeah, they're fine. They're fine. Um, no one's making noises. Um, guys, guys, being a cat mom is stressful sometimes. <laughs> I can't imagine having a real, like, like biological like, human baby kids. Human baby kids? I, I can barely keep up with these guys. Anyways. As I was saying, first point I said, gotta really keep my ADHD on track during all these distractions. Okay, the first point I said, stay true to you. Don't feel like you have to do what other role players or just content creators in general do. Now, it's great to take tips from people and it's great to get advice from people and they take bits and pieces excuse me i'm burping take bits and pieces of other people's like schedules and like how they do things um and make it your own but like what works for someone else might not work for you like i i came into the world where it was fairly new there wasn't a lot of resources of like how to role play. Like right now, if you look up like how to Minecraft role play, like there's a lot that comes up. Um, I did a video all about how to make a role play like Afmao, just completely, you know, like like just like just just talking about like what mods she used, you know, what texture pack she used, because I knew I would love that video when I was starting out. Like not necessarily making a, a role play like Afmao, just making a role play in general, and I know. Afmao would have drawn me into the video because at that point in time, she was who I aspired to be like, you know? Um, nothing wrong with that, obviously. But like, just because someone uses a team of body actors doesn't mean you have to. Just because someone has 10 writers doesn't mean you have to. I do basically everything by myself. But at the same time, just because I do everything by myself doesn't mean you have to. Figure out what works best with you, what you like creating, you know, figure out what you enjoy the creation process of, because just because it gets the end result doesn't mean you enjoy it. Um, figure out how you enjoy making the content. Uh, 
before anything else um as like like on the road obviously like obviously you need to like start making the content to learn if you like making it certain ways um but just like as you're like researching how to install mods researching what mods you need researching texture packs if you want shaders if you want to do first person if you want to do cinematic all that kind of stuff and just because you enjoy watching a certain type of role play doesn't mean you have hey 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 i heard a little bit of noise a little cool off okay uh just because you you enjoy watching a certain type of role play doesn't mean you have to make that certain type of role play you should only create the type of role plays you enjoy creating um that goes with any form of content just because you enjoy watching funny moment highlight reels doesn't necessarily mean you're going to enjoy creating them um that takes a lot of editing maybe you don't like editing maybe you love editing and that's like the perfect thing for you you know it, it really depends on you listen to your heart the whole time feel out what you are looking for these cats are freaking crazy right now it's because they're about to eat it's almost their dinner time it's their dinner time in about 45 minutes, and they always get crazy right before they eat anyways. I apologize. I really do. I really do. And only don't record this late. Anyways, <laughs> um, make sure you're doing what you love is like my biggest tip. Um, as for like the actually nitty gritty, how to make content when you don't know what you're doing, um, biggest tip is don't be scared to Google things. Don't be scared to research the fuck out of whatever you want to do. Uh, don't be scared to mess up either. Just because you don't know what you're doing doesn't mean that you shouldn't make content. If you are like, if you feel like what you made isn't good, either, sorry, I was making sure that you were okay because I heard a noise. Um, either, can you guys calm down? Sometimes I call them lemurs because they run like lemurs around the room. Little oh, heartbeat. Um, as I was saying, lemurs is the only thing stuck in my head right now. Uh, what was I saying? Don't be scared to research. Don't be scared to mess up. If you don't like what you made scrap it and do it again or hell post it my first episode of a role play was shit it was not good like objectively like the editing was not good i was cropping out the bandicam logo from my recordings because i didn't know how to use obs at the time um but i had an editor that didn't actually crop it was it was windows movie maker and so i literally just like it like slowly came back into frame that is an objectively like not well put together video but i did it and i made it it was something that i made and it was my first ever video like ever ever gaming video and I put it out there for everyone to see and it honestly did okay. And so just because you think something's shit doesn't mean everyone else is going to think it's shit. It might be great to someone else. And for those who do say it's shit, they are insecure and they know if they would have posted something like that, they would have been mortified to let other people see it. So the fact that you just posted it is pretty badass. High five, man. Man is gender neutral in this in this sentence. Don't worry. High five, everyone. But yeah, that's prob that that's that. <laughs> Anyways, I should move on to the next question. Uh, Mulichu, hi Jam, hi Mo, hello. Um, how do you come up with your stories? So this one is kind of like a weird question for me. It always has been because I just come up with stories you know i'm kind of crazy like that i just kind of like i'm thinking and i'm are you just cleaning yourself on camera just let me censor you geez uh, <laughs> um i just i love creating worlds i love creating characters um i've never struggled with creating stories uh, but i will say like that doesn't mean like i know i hate hearing that like i know i know like i always hate hearing like when i'm like how do you do blah 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 and they're just like 
I don't know. I just am a natural at it. I'm like, you piece of shit. <laughs> I need real advice. And I, I'm, I'm here with your real advice. Okay. I've had plenty of friends that really struggle with coming up with stories that have made amazing stories. Get together with other creative people and just like talk. talk. And if you don't have anyone creative in your life, record yourself talking on your voice memos on your phone. Or in your mic on your computer. Or on a video on your phone. Literally anything. Just be talking. And like, sometimes I'll just do this. I'll just like walk around. Sometimes I'm not even recording myself. I just walk around talking to myself like an insane person. Because I am one. Because sometimes in your head, the only things you can think of in your head, sometimes it like keeps you back from thinking of everything. Does that make sense? What you may be thinking in your head might not be everything you can think of. And sometimes you have to push yourself a little further by talking out loud, even if it's just yourself, to really get everything you want to out. Like, just be like, start creating like a character you think is really cool and really relatable. And then think about, okay, well, what she would, what would she do? You know, like what world would she live in? Stuff like that. And I I gave more tips on this type of thing of like how to come up with storylines and stuff like that. Uh, How to write scripts and stuff for Minecraft role plays on the Minecraft role plays episode or writing a, writing a, writing a script. I don't know. It was in the first or second episode of this podcast. I don't remember. I I do apologize. You should go watch them both anyways. Um, They're good episodes. Uh, (laughs) Less chaotic than this is, but I don't know. Maybe you guys thrive off the chaos. I don't know. You are my audience after all. Um, And as this goes for, I know this is probably talking specifically about microphone plays, but I've also written books and I also do ASMR role plays. So that the, the both of those also need stories for them. And I feel like this this method works for every type of story you could possibly be trying to think of. Um, so I highly re- recommend talking. Talk out loud. Talk to yourself. Think of like, okay, there's an angel that fell down from heaven. Blah, 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 blah. Like just like, let it all come out. You don't have to go with everything you say. But just like talking about it, you might come up with amazing ideas. But you just don't have anyone to talk to you about it. And so you would never know unless you said it out loud. Anyways, um, next question, Mayuria, 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 I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, uh, anything about script writing tips on how to get people interested to help slash watch? This is a really good question, and I think that this is something that people don't talk about very often. I rarely hear people talk about getting your audience engaged with the story you're telling. I feel like that's not talked about, at least in the role-playing sphere, um, very often. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna attack each side of this. How to get people interested, how to get people interested to help you make your role play. Have a really good summary. Have a really good, like teaser, little paragraph, like about like four, five, six sentences that really draw someone in. Like in a world, you know, like that kind of, you need that kind of deal. Not necessarily in a world, but like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, like a very, like, it really summarizes the mystery of what's going on, if that makes sense. Or like, how are they going to survive? Or like, how are they going to do this? Or are they going to get together? Or is this, this, this is this. You, I don't know how to speak, but you guys understand, I think, what I'm trying to say. You get it. You know, you get it. Um, That is the best way to get people to wanting to help. And then also tell them kind of where you are in the process. Um, Like, I, oh, I just created the characters for it. I'm about to move on to building and script writing. And I would love help with one of those things. Something like that. Also, castingcall.club, if you don't know, is an amazing resource. It is an amazing website where you can cast voice actors, builders, script writers, audio engineers. Like, you can you can cast anyone off of that. Now, if you're going to get someone to audition, that's up to you with making a really um, tasty, tasty little page for your for your project on there um because you really got to draw people in 
And that's what this is talking about, obviously. Have a really good summary. Um, have some cool art. Have a good, have a logo. Have a logo. Your girl does them. So, you know, I do it for money, by the way. No, you don't have to pay someone to do your logo, though. You can fiddle around with it yourself. There's a flaming text dot com or whatever it's called i don't know if it's dot com don't look up flaming text dot com because i don't know if that is actually what it's called but flaming text dot something um is a great just logo maker um canva the free version i have the subscription since i use it for work but you don't need the subscription to make cool logos on it it just gives you extra stuff if you have the subscription um play around with that come up with a cool title too like Cool titles really draw people in. Like, I feel like Charmed Academics is way more enticing than Minecraft High, you know? Like, like there's nothing wrong with having a Minecraft High series. I have a Minecraft High series and a Minecraft University series. I've actually had two Minecraft High School series, literally called Minecraft High School and Minecraft High, and they are literally connected in the same universe. It's the daughter of the Minecraft High School is Minecraft High. I, I get it. I, I totally, like... It happens. Nothing wrong with having a generic title. Minecraft Detective. Minecraft this. Minecraft that. Minecraft everything. Nothing wrong with that. But you are probably going to get more people that want to join your project if you have like a really cool title that like is really unique and doesn't blend in with the crowd. Because they might see a million Minecraft high school auditions on casting call. But then they see this one that like sounds really cool. And like, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna want to click on it. It's, it's enticing. Um, but yeah, that's my, that's my advice. <laughs> Hi, baby. I love you. You don't have to hide in the closet. <laughs> that's my advice on like how to get people to help with it. Also, just be very transparent and very kind. Because if people are offering their time for free, do not take advantage of them. Do not, do not suck them for for all they got until they're dry and and on the side of the road crying in a ditch as really dark image in my head don't take advantage of people just of what i'm saying understand people are there for free taking time out of their lives and the time time is time's your most important asset People are taking time out of their day because they want to help you. So just be kind and then be patient, but also don't feel bad for directing people. There's a, there's a very big difference between being bossy and being a directing person, like being like a, a boss, you know? Being the boss of someone is different from being bossy. Um, I got called bossy when I was a kid, and so I overcorrected by being the most massive people pleaser, like, oh, whatever you want to do is fine. And when I got into this world, I learned I had to pull the boss pants up. I had to be a girl boss. <laughs> girl boss. Gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss. Don't do those. But be a girl boss if you want to be a girl boss, or boy boss, or they them boss, whatever you want to be. Um, besides the fact. <laughs> Besides the fact, it's okay to be a little, like, it's okay to to direct people, but remember at the end of the day that their time is valuable and you shouldn't take advantage of their time, if that makes sense. Now, how to get people interested to watch? Now this, this, you need some, you need good characters. You need to really take your time on your characters. You really need to make them characters that are relatable um, that maybe have some mystery to them, um, that aren't perfect, but also aren't annoyingly bad people, if that makes sense. Um, unless that's kind of like what you, if it, unless it's like a style of like this person, like a goody two shoes, blah, 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 but then like they like break out of the shell or like this person's a bad person, but then becomes a good person. You know, that's, that's, that's different, that's storyline. But like at the end of the day, you want p relatable characters, um, that are well-rounded characters and feel like real people that really gets people to want to watch because they end up rooting for the character they want the character to succeed in something kind of segue into my next point you should make sure there's an underlying there's something we're working towards in the series like i outline an entire season at a time with how i do my role plays because 
I know that if I'm just writing script to script, it's not going to be as cohesive. It's not going to be as engaging. And I'm not going to be able to think of like, oh, I mentioned this thing later on. Maybe I should foreshadow that earlier in the episodes. I do that a lot with Charmed Academics because I planned out the entire season. I recorded and edited the entire season before I even uploaded an episode. And then I scheduled the uploads to be weekly. That's another, that that's actually comes into play in, in the next question, actually. So I'll st- stay that little deal, like scheduling uploads till the next question. But, but pin that. Um, but back to the question at hand. Um, have like some sort of mystery, whether that's like, will they get together? Uh, are they going to die? Like it could be anything. Um, because that really, and introduce it within the first five minutes, because that is what will actually grasp (laughs) you. Oh, really? Come here, babies. Come here. That will really grasp your viewer, um, make them want to continue watching. Um, also, Thumbnails are really important. So like take your time, look at other people's thumbnails, take bits and pieces from thumbnails that do well and you really like to look up and find what suits your series the most. Um, You want it to reflect your content really well, but you also want it to do well in the algorithm. You know, like if you're really, if you're wanting people to watch it, you got to make sure they'll click on it. Um, Yeah, that's my, that's my advice for that question. Next question from LYS or Liz. Liz, L-Y-S, um, how to keep on uploading. Um, take that pin out, schedule your uploads. Um, I used to be the type to record, edit a video, upload it literally that minute. I would upload it no matter what the time of day was, upload it. I would try to do this daily at some points. I would drive myself freaking insane. Schedule your uploads. It really helps because at the end, like you could, you could work for a month on a video, post it. And then in that second after posting it, shit, now I have to work on my next video. It's exhausting. It becomes, it makes it feel like you're constantly in this race of getting a video out in time. And it's exhausting. What I recommend doing is if you're making a role play, outline your whole series, record the entire season, edit the entire season, then upload it every week or however often you want to upload it. It also prevents you from getting, you know, distracted by other series and wanting to go do those because I'm very non-committal with creative projects. I love creating things. Sometimes that means not finishing what I start and that's okay though. Um, I used to really, really get down on myself for not finishing every single project I start. And now I'm kind of at the point in my life where I'm like, if I didn't finish it, it's because I didn't like it. You know, it's because I didn't have passion for it anymore. Now, does that mean that a, a project I started seven months ago and just like came across again, I can't re-get passion for? No, like I can totally get passion for a project that I lost passion for a long time ago. Um, but working fast and while you have the passion for it initially is really important. Also, don't be on this on this question of how to keep on uploading don't be scared of posting not perfect content it's okay if your video isn't perfect as long as it is good enough to the point where you're satisfied with it i know those perfectionists out there i i i get it um i used to literally not want to post anything for like for like months i didn't want to post anything cuz i was scared of it not being good enough get out of your head Get out of your head. Everything's going to be okay. (laughs) I'm bringing out the ASMR voice because I'm really passionate about this. And it's going to be okay. You don't have to be perfect all the time and neither does your content. Post what makes you happy to make. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you're driving yourself crazy over it, you no longer are getting happy from making it. Um, Yeah. Now, there's more questions on here, but I will go ahead and move over to AS- Zoomy ASMR since we're already 35 minutes through and answer some of those questions real quick. So when they refer to role plays, they'll probably be talking about ASMR role plays now. <laughs> um, half laugh, lolf, half lolf, underscore, sorry if I mispronounced your name, says, 
Hi, Izumi. Hope you're doing well. My question is, how do you get over the awkwardness of doing voiceovers or ASMR? I've done voiceover for some animations of mine and they feel so awkward. Any tips to help? As And as always, take care. Take care, all you lovelies. Take care as well. Um, and I am doing well. I hope you're doing well as well. Um, well as well. <laughs> um, awkwardness when doing voiceovers or ASMR. So I completely understand where you're coming from. And I think practice, I know it like it's so aggravating hearing like you need to practice as the like how to do this. But like really that is how you get over it. You need to practice and really just like don't judge your voice because at the end of the day, you need to like learn, okay, what all the voices I can do? I, I guess I could do a couple different voices. Like you need to be able to experiment and kind of have fluidity with your voice without feeling nervous about it. Um, takes time, takes patience with yourself. Um, don't beat yourself up if it takes a little while. Um, I would definitely also say like doing it purposefully stupid and then doing it seriously sometimes helps. Um, like if you're having a really hard time, just like, um, uh, they feel so awkward. Any tips to help? Oh, so awkward. Oh, blah, 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 blah. They feel so awkward. Any tips to help? Sometimes it gets that kind of like jitter out and you're able to just kind of say it afterwards. Also, say it plainly and then say it with your pizzazz. Take a million takes if you have to until um, you find that one that doesn't feel awkward to you. Um, in like the professional voice acting world, you do an A, B, and C take. You do three different takes for everything, um, typically. Um, I mean, just on projects sometimes. Sometimes if you're working with a director directly, you don't have to. Um, but that tends to be it. Gabe would know a lot more about this because he's actually like a professional going into professional voice acting uh, where I just do like gigs on the side. <laughs> but um, from what I have heard, that is that is pretty much what happens. Um, and that's what I do in my own recordings. I do three different takes, but sometimes you got to take more and you have to delete the other takes until you have three good ones. Um, so take your time, be patient with yourself, practice a lot, take tons of takes. Um, as for like ASMR specifically, rather than voiceover with like voice acting characters and like voice acting narrations and stuff like that, um, ASMR, it's a matter of practice. Like if you go back to my early ASMR, I am way less comfortable acting than I am now. And I've always acted like I was a theater kid when I was younger. I know, <laughs> shocking, right? <laughs> no one could have guessed that. I promise I wasn't like one of the really obnoxious ones. I did it for only like three years, I promise. But I was friends with all the obnoxious ones. They were obnoxious, but I loved them so much. Like they were obnoxious with me. Like we were obnoxious together. Anyways, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't, it's fine. Regardless, <laughs> practice acting. Look in the mirror. Like I know it's kind of weird to look in the mirror at yourself and like act. I get it, but do it. It's it's good. Also, just like practice reading things out loud. That's a really big thing that I don't think a lot of people think of because you got to read things and then you got to say them out loud the exact way they're written. Kind of crazy. Anyways, next question from Lena or Lena. I think it's Lena, but it might be Lena. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. Um, I'm just going to say sorry if I mispronounced your name to everyone, by the way. Just preface pr the rest of the names. Um... How good does your setup have to be at the start? Like what is considered a good starting setup? Um, so depending on what you're doing, since this is on the ASMR channel, I assume ASMR, um, I've, I've known people that record on an iPhone headphone mic and have pretty good ASMR, um, whether it be traditional ASMR or ASMR role plays. Um, I recommend for just comfortability and being able to grow a little quicker. Um, investing in something like a Blue Yeti or a Snowball mic. Um, I think a Snowball mic's like $40, I think. So it's a very easy, like asking it for your birthday or Christmas type of thing or saving up and being able to get it yourself. The only problem with a Snowball mic or a Yeti mic um, is background noise. Um, but at the same time, using a software like Audacity, which is what I use, it's completely free 
it has a noise reduction software where you can select a clip that has the noise you're trying to get rid of, hit like, this is the noise I want to get rid of, click the whole clip and then say like, get rid of that noise and it gets rid of that noise from most of it. And it's pretty good at doing that, but there's obviously, there's only so much background noise it can get rid of. Um, I started YouTube on an iPhone. Like back when I, I did vlogs for a while, I didn't on my, my iPad actually for a while, my iPad, I was eight years old. Um, and then when I did like gaming content, I started on um, a really old, I think it was like an Acer laptop is, I still have it. I have it for like, for memory's sake. Uh, maybe one day I'll be able to turn it on, like see what's on it. Um, I think I had to wipe it because it like literally, I think I got a virus on it at some point, but regardless, I would love to be able to just turn it on to say like, I still have it and it works. Um, I had that with a snowball. Well, no, I didn't start with a snowball mic. I saved up and got a snowball mic. I had la laptop, which was my first ever laptop ever. My first ever computer that was not a hand-me-down because my I got a hand-me-down PC from my cousin before that, but it was really old. It was office PC and it ended up breaking like a year after I got it. So then I just fully moved over to just, just that laptop. Um, and like, I could barely play Minecraft on it. I think I had Minecraft on the lowest render distance possible, which if you do not know, it looks real foggy. It looks crazy. Um, and I also still like, was like, eh, uh, uh, it, uh, uh, like that was literally how it moved. But I still made role plays out of it. And I literally had the like, custom NPCs. I couldn't download Biomes of Plenty. I couldn't download Better Foliage. It literally would not run on my computer. I had like custom NPCs. And if I was lucky, I could get Deco Craft. That was pushing it though. That was like made my computer cry. And it was so glitchy. And I I had a I had a headset mic that I stole from my dad. That was my first ever microphone. A headset mic I stole from my dad. It was Turtle Beach headphones. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got a snowball mic. I saved up and bought myself a snowball mic. Um, major upgrade. Upgrades, people. Upgrades, right? That was then what I used for a while. Then I got a Yeni mic. I used that for years. And I finally got the PC I'm using right now. This was my first ever PC. My parents helped me out with it. They're amazing. I freaking love my parents. Um, it was like half birthday Christmas gift because my birthday is near Christmas. Um, I'm a November baby. Um, half me also saving up for it. So it, it's not a crazy expensive PC. I, it is still a lot of money, like $1,000, which I'm pretty sure is how much this PC costs is a lot of money. But in the PC world, that's really not that much money nowadays. Like my boyfriend's PC was two grand and it's one of the cheaper Alienware PCs you can buy, you know, like that's like still okay, you know, um, it's, it's, it's a pre-built cyber power game PC. It's asked me a while. I've upgraded the RAM and I had a storage upgrade. That's like the only things I've upgraded on it. That and I have purple fans in it, which I freaking love. Um, that Gabe got for me on my birth birthday. Yeah, birthday one year. He also got me the RAM that year. So, and now I have this mic, which is a Eichdon. Eichdon. It's an, it's from Amazon. It's an, it's a microphone from Amazon. It's like, it's nothing special. I'm going to hopefully be able to upgrade by the end of the year. That's my goal. Hopefully you guys can help me save up for that. My membership's coming in. Uh, share the channel with your friends, if you know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> I would love to have exposable income. Um, <laughs> don't, it's, 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 these are jokes. These are jokes. I mean, I would like to have extra income. Besides what will pay for groceries, bills, and food. Uh, groceries and food are the same thing. Groceries, bills, and rent. But the, the rest is jokes. You do not have to do those things. I mean, sharing my channel is free. It's, it's just kind of nice to be able to do, you know. Guys, we'll move on from that, okay? Also, I just announced today that at 50,000 subscribers, I'm dying my hair I'm going to get it professionally dyed this time too. Because last time I dyed my own hair purple as a celebration for raising $700. Jesus Christ. For Charmed Economic Season 1. I still can't believe we did that. That was freaking mind-blowing experience. Most money I've ever made in one day. That's insane! 
that was actually fucking insane. Um, and I'm so happy that I got to get the artwork that I wanted. I got to spend the time I did on it because that was a big thing is like taking time out of like my freelance work to work on Charmed Academics was such a big deal for me because I was like scraping by during that time period, saving up to move out. Um, but yes. Um, anyways, <laughs> that was amazing. And I freaking love you guys. Um, but yeah, set up. I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's any like your setup's too bad. You can't record. Because, like, I've seen ASMR where it's literally, like, just their camera. And it's great. I think the biggest thing is practicing being on camera or practicing having your voice recorded um, over setup. Um, but what I what I would consider a good starting setup is having at least a somewhat decent microphone whether that be a $20 microphone or an $100 microphone. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be, you know, $1,000 Newman. It doesn't have to be that. That's not a starting setup. That is crazy. That is insane. Professional voice actor level startup. I recommend, I recommend the most is a Blue Yeti microphone. If you can afford a Blue Yeti, get a Blue Yeti. But if you, if you can get a snowball, that's still great. Swan, I believe, uses a snowball. The Swan Sorceress, if you guys uh, watch Fallen Stars SMP. Um, and her audio sounds great. Whatever you're able to do in time, though, that's a good starting setup. Whatever setup you got, good starting setup. Um, don't be embarrassed of not sounding perfect when you're starting. Because starting setup, yeah. Um, you can be on a laptop, you can be in a PC, really whatever um, can go on YouTube and upload a video and also record your audio. Um, as I said, I use Audacity. I really do recommend it. It's A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. It's A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. Audacity, like audio. Audacity. The audacity of that bitch. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but for thumbnails, I recommend Canva. Even if you can't play for the subscription, do the free version. It's just easy. And they already have the the thumbnail sizing on there for you to just customize. Um, regardless, though. Whatever you can start with is good. Next question. Um, also, no. You're... You, you, uh, no. Why did I say no? Also, no. Also, no. My head is all over the place. My ADHD, wild tonight. Um, how good do you set up have to be at the start? As good as you can get it. Because at the end of the day, what matters most is you getting yourself out there. That's the short answer. Because I know I ramble. Um, next question is from Super Mola. Um, how much time do you have to put in to make content? Or how much time is too much? I thought this was a good, well-rounded question. Because it's like, okay, how much how much time should you put into your content? Like how much time is needed? You know, cause I, I like for those wondering, do I have time for this? Do I have time to content create? Um, and also the other side of it, how do I know when I'm focusing on it too often? So I think it, first of all, first half of this, how much time do you put in to make content? So do you have to put in to make content? So me personally, um, I work really well on a day by day schedule. So, um, well, not day by day schedule, a, a week by week schedule is more accurate. Um, I basically plan out a day dedicated to each thing that is a big thing I want to focus on because I struggle from going to, from one passionate project to another passionate project or one not passionate project to a passionate project or vice versa, um, without getting burnt out. Um, so what I like to do is break it up into days, so seven days in a week, X amount of days I need to take off. So like in breakuary, which is this month, I'm trying to not work too, too much. I'm taking three days off a week, which is crazy for me because for the past six months, I've been taking one day off every other week. I'm hoping I find a happy middle ground next month. That's the goal of breakuary is to really hone in. How much do I have to work? How much do I need to work? Does that make sense? Like how much, 
How much do I want to work? How much do I need to work? That's what I meant to say. Um, I take three days, I think three days off a week in breakuary. Feb- it, it's January, breakuary. Um, and then like when February comes around, I'm going to start posting more often on Izumi, this channel, my main channel. Because right now I'm posting about once, twice a week. Um, and in February, I plan on posting four days a week, right? Four days a week? Four days a week? Is that is that the, is that going to be the schedule, love? Yeah, it's four days a week. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's going to be fun. Um, and I say that with all seriousness. I'm very excited for it. Um, I break up what I need to do in two days of doing them. Um, so say I want to take the weekends off like a normal job. Saturday and Sunday I have off. This is hypothetical because I don't normally do this because on the weekends, I'm an introvert by the way, and on the weekends I normally go out to hang out with my family uh, because it's when they're off of work. Um, So I normally push that to be I have Sunday and Monday off um, and I work on Saturday. I just like just go out to lunch with them real quick and then come back home type of deal. Um, a little work lunch, you know, a little break lunch and then come back home and work the rest of the day till it's like midnight. Not healthy. Don't do that. Actually have like real office hours. That's my next point actually. Um, but first part of this, I break up the deals into like, okay, so this day I'm going to record a Zoomy ASMR and I'm going to post memberships and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. This other day, I'm going to work on my upcoming Minecraft roleplay and I'm going to build and I'm going to write. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to call, call with the voice actors and kind of like uh, brainstorm ideas for the next season. Like they like figure out wh- what scenes I should, you know, elaborate on in the, in the outline and stuff like that. And then another day I'll do, you know, Charmed Economics season two or whatever I may, what, what other things I might have on my schedule. Um, and then I'll have, I have to schedule at least two of those days because I know how much time my freelance work takes. I need at least two whole days to do all my freelance work to make ends meet. Now that's working from like the moment I get up to like dinner time, which I would rather break that up into smaller segments. And that is what you guys are helping me with, with being able to make Izumi and Izumi ASMR my full income. Um... Two days a week is not crazy though. You know, there's people that work seven days a week, you know, like work, work 48 hour shifts, you know, and and like nurses and hospitals and stuff like that. Like I, I am very, very fortunate in my position, like extremely fortunate. I understand how privileged I am in my position. I am so lucky. Like I am, I feel like the luckiest girl in the world sometimes just because of how amazing the opportunities you guys have given me at such an incredibly young age. I'm 19 years old and I'm almost completely independent on like doing what I love. I'm so close. Like I'm so, I can taste, I can taste it. I can taste doing only content creation rather than freelance work. And it's, it's so close. I'm so excited for it. Um, and I only, I have you to thank. I only have you to thank. And obviously my hard work of like, you know, staying up late working on stuff. And like, I, I, I literally, I work too much it is to the point where I have to give myself office hours, which is the next point I'll get into. Within those days, I also set office hours for myself. I'm not allowed to work after dinner um, unless it is something I'm incredibly passionate about, like Izumi or Izumi ASMR. But like when it comes to freelance work, after dinner, I'm not allowed to work on it. I can wake up extra early the next day if I have extra work I need to get done. But I'm not allowed to work till one, two, three in the morning. Because I know I will if I don't cut myself off. And then I get incredibly burnt out and I can't do anything. And I have to stay home for two weeks and I can't talk to anyone. And it's like a mess. I know how my brain works. That's how it works. Um, but with this month, it's really been a, a, a learning experience for me. Because I am not used to having this much free time. And I've been building Gabe and I's voice booth during this month we've been spending we like we we started last month at the end of the month we started the week before christmas um we went over to my parents house to my dad's shop 
every weekend and we would spend the entire day building out there. Like we would literally leave after feeding the cats and come home in time for feeding the cats. Like that is like they, they, they eat twice a day, 12 hours apart. We were there for almost 12 hours every single weekend doing that. And it was such a strange experience. And I had Mondays where I could just like focus on like fun work and just kind of relax, not do too much. Um, but it was so crazy because it forced me to not work on the weekends. And before this, every time I was like, oh, I'll take off this weekend, I still ended up I still ended up working. I still ended up doing something work related because that's just how I am. I'm a workaholic. Um, and so this month has been very good for me of learning what a good life work balances. Um, I really do recommend if anyone really feels like they're stuck in this work-life balance, do something where you cannot work just on the days you're not supposed to be working for like a month and see how better your mental health is. It's crazy. It's crazy, at least for me, but I'm still doing all of my fun work when I get home from building the booths. Like I worked on Fallen Stars like revamp stuff because season two Season two's coming out soon because the season finale of, of Fallen Stars, uh, season one, or phase one, I'm kind of calling it phases as well, uh, phase one ends soon, phase two begins soon, and so, like, I, there's new logos, and, like, I was writing more and stuff, and that's just fun, right? So, like, I did that after building the booths, but I was, that's, like, it. I wasn't able to do freelance work, I wasn't able to, like, pre-plan video ideas, I wasn't able to, like scrutinize the algorithm and like like they, they, they do like this the super brain taxing work that I would do for no reason on the weekends when I'm not supposed to be working so my plan is for next month what I think is a good schedule is setting office hours for yourself and having one or two days off a week um if you're able to if you're able to do that, um, it's okay on those days off to do really fun stuff, but don't let yourself accidentally slip into the not so fun stuff and get stressed. Um, do make it where you literally have to not work for X amount of time. You have to do something that's literally for your pure enjoyment that does not make content, if that makes sense, um, on those days. And then I, 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 what I like to do is I eat breakfast and then I go to work go to work. And then I take a lunch break for an hour in the middle of my work day. And then I work the rest of the day. And then I'm not allowed to work after dinner. I am learning this month though, that I am still a night owl. Like I still do like working when it's dark out on my fun stuff. So on the days I have fun work, I'm less like I have to do it and then not do it and then do it. That's like more so my freelance days for the stuff that it's like, I get to work on a Zoomy this day. Um, I normally wake up, have a really easygoing morning, maybe run a couple errands, then I come back, and then after lunch, I start work, take a break for dinner, and then work till sh I take a shower that night, because I take showers at night. And that's what works for me on those days. Listen to your body, don't overwork yourself, really, oh, their dinner alarm just went off. Your dad's supposed to feed you tonight. I fed you in the morning. His alarm should have gone off. I'm almost done. I'll wrap this up and then I'll go make sure he feeds you, okay? You seem very snuggled right now, though, with your sister, so I think you're good. I'll feed you in just a minute. Well, I'll get dad to feed you because I fed you this morning. I feed in the morning, so Gabe feeds at night. Um, anyways, the next half of this... How much time is too much? If you work from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, that's too much. If you work from the moment you get off your normal day job to the moment you go to sleep every single day, that's too much. But at the same time, if it feeds your soul and you don't get burnt out from it, it's not too much then. Because maybe you're working towards it being your full-time job and then your day job's gone and you can do, you have so much more time, you know? Like you can literally just, you can grind until you get to that point. Um, I'd say it really depends on the person and the men and their mental health 
And are they prone to overworking themselves? Are they prone to forgetting meals? Um, I definitely think if you're forgetting to eat, you're working too much. You need to set an alarm. Remember to eat. That's what I have to do. Um, not anymore because I got food that I really, really like. But for a while, I was very like, I just forget. I'd get like, tunnel vision on my work. <sighs> I really, how much time is too much is a very strange question for me to answer because I'm still learning that and I don't want to give advice that I then want to take back later on um, because I am, I'm, I'm learning how much time is too much time, how much time is too little right now. And so I think I want to come back and answer this in a future episode. I'm going to try to take note of that, but that is all the advice I've given though. And like, if you guys can take some advice from that and think that it's good, then that's good enough for me. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Izumi's Cozy Cast. I'm so sorry to say it is coming to a close now. Stay tuned because next episode, we're going to have a very special guest. I can't wait for you guys to see them. Anyways, I love you guys. Bye loves.